Welcome to MEB. This is episode 10, Elementary Material Balance Calculations. This is an exciting episode because after covering some necessary background, we are finally ready to start performing material balances. This is something best learned by example, but before we jump in, let's go through some of the steps. Material Balances Procedure Step 1. Draw a block flow diagram of the process described. For this part, use boxes to represent process arrows and arrows to represent streams, as I covered in Episode 2 of this series. Step 2. Fill in all known information. Certainly this includes given flow rates and compositions. Later we might want to include temperature, pressure, volume, etc. My general rule here is that if a number is stated in the problem, you should probably put it in your diagram somewhere, even if you're not sure if it'll be important. Step 3. Assign variables for the remaining unknowns. Remember, we need the amount of every species in every stream, and until you can express that with variables, you aren't finished labeling your diagram. Step 4. Classify the process according to the methods described in MEB Episode 3, Process Classification. Note that the order of this step could have been much earlier, but I find that drawing and labeling the process first helps me to conceptualize it so that it's easier for me to classify. Step 5. Cancel terms as appropriate in the general balance equation and perform a material balance on each species. To begin, we will start simple, with mostly continuous, non-reactive, and steady-state processes, for which the general balance equation simplifies to in is equal to out. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have a separation process that takes an input stream of 1,500 kg per hour, and it contains 30 weight percent methanol, 50 percent ethanol, and 20 weight percent water. There are three outlet streams. The top stream is 400 kg per hour and contains 50% methanol and 25% ethanol. The middle stream contains 300 kg per hour of ethanol. The bottom stream contains 25% methanol. Our task is to find the flow rate and composition of the bottom stream. So let's get started by drawing that block flow diagram. Notice that there's a lot of information that's listed here in words, and for me at least, it's hard to make sense of it without putting it into a picture. So my block flow diagram contains a box, which is a separation process, and then one input stream, as the problem says, and three output streams. Next, we fill in all known information. This problem is actually pretty straightforward in terms of which number goes where, but be prepared that most problems may not be this easy, and reading comprehension will be required. Note also that in the input stream, the composition adds up to 100%, meaning that everything is accounted for. In contrast, the top and bottom exit streams do not have compositions adding up to 10. This means that there are other components in the stream that the problem did not mention. Next, let's assign variables for the unknowns. Going off what I just said, what else could possibly be in the top stream? Well, because methanol and ethanol are already accounted for, the only other possibility is water. And since the compositions have to add up to 100%, we can actually fill in the percentage here instead of treating it like an unknown. In the middle stream, I'm given a component mass flow rate for ethanol instead of the composition. However, unless the problem directly states otherwise, I should assume that every stream contains every component. So I'm going to stick with the established convention of labeling this stream with flow rates instead of compositions. It's not an issue to mix and match these conventions among the different streams. Just remember that the subscripts M and W here mean that they're individual component molar flow rates, not total. In the bottom stream, we're back to the composition convention. But again, 25% is not equal to 100%, so we have the other two components present here as well. However, unlike the top stream, we cannot solve for the compositions of ethanol and water just yet. We know that they combine to be the other 75% of the stream, but we don't know the breakdown. Compositions by themselves aren't enough to be able to calculate the amount either, so we need a variable to fill in for the total flow rate. I'm going to call it M4. Now we classify the process. There are inputs and outputs, so it's continuous. There is no reaction mentioned, so it's non-reactive. We'll also assume steady state. This classification means that generation, consumption, and accumulation terms cancel in the general balance equation, and we are left with material balances of the form in is equal to out. Now we can derive the material balances, remembering that the amount of a species may be expressed as the total amount times the composition. For methanol, the amount in is 1,500 times 0 0.3. Methanol exits the separation process in all three outlet streams, so they are all added together on the right side of the equation. Notice again for the middle stream that we have the individual component flow rate, so there is no multiplication by the composition. 
For ethanol, we follow the same procedure. I challenge you to pause the video now and try to write the material balance for water. I'll give you a few seconds. And here's what you should have gotten. Now that we have three material balance equations, we can consider them together as a system of linear algebraic equations, which we can solve for the unknowns. Pause the video again and see if you can make any progress with solving. But don't spend too long because in this case, we have more unknowns than we have equations. And you can't solve a system of equations like that, no matter how hard you try, unless you're given more information or can find other equations. If it seems frustrating to have gone through all the work to derive these equations but not be able to solve them, I'm with you. In a future episode of this series, I'll show you how to perform a degree of freedom analysis, which can determine if you have enough information to solve a material balance before you even start. You might be thinking that, in addition to the three individual species material balances, you can also perform a total material balance, and therefore get closer to being able to solve. Let's try. The total balance says that 1,500 kilograms per hour from the input stream equals 400 kilograms per hour from the top stream, M3M plus 300 plus M3W kilograms per hour from the middle stream, plus M4 from the bottom stream. If we add this to our system of equations, it now looks like we've increased the number of equations from 3 to 4. However, notice what happens if you try to add the methanol, ethanol, and water material balances. Recall from earlier that the compositions of ethanol and water in stream 4 sum to 75%. Convince yourself that the sum of these three balances equals the total balance. And this makes perfect sense if you think about it, given that the total balance is the total by definition. But what does this all mean? Let's qualify the requirement from earlier by saying that the equations that we need to solve a system of linear algebraic equations must be independent from one another, meaning fundamentally different. So, if it is possible to derive a new equation by algebraically manipulating or combining one or more other equations that you already have, then the new equation is not independent. You may, if you like, replace an existing equation with a dependent equation, but you may not use it in addition to the others. My personal advice, because the total material balance is usually simpler, is to substitute it for the most complex material balance. Of course, unfortunately, this gets us no closer to being able to solve this particular problem. The rule that you must remember is that the maximum number of independent material balances that you may derive for a process unit is equal to the number of chemical species involved with that process unit. Let's wrap up this episode by discussing the learning objectives. You should now be able to 1. Approach material balance problems by drawing and fully labeling a block flow diagram. 2. Determine how many independent material balances may be derived. And 3. Derive material balances for each individual component. That will conclude this episode. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.